Right, so today, uh, for me, luckily, it's time for another album review, as my first album review, Fear Factory's Aggression Continuum, got more views than I honestly expected in just a few days, so it might be the reason that the album is of course new and you know just not just my subscribers uh watch that review but well whoever bumped in uh, to my video who wanted to see the uh, review of the album so i i think it has to do with that that the album is just so hot topic right now uh, in the metal scene and just a new release but anyway i decided that uh to do another album review and uh, this time it has to do with this shirt so <laughs> right shirt uh right shirt for the right uh album review so as you can see from the title uh, this is one of my all-time favorite albums of pretty much of any music genre and probably my favorite death metal album. The band isn't necessarily a death metal band, it, it's not, but they definitely made a death metal album in 19 and it's a uh, of course, Napalm Death, Harmony Corruption. Uh, yeah, uh, just no, almost perfect album. This, uh, so, um, where do I start? Uh, well, Napalm Death at first day kind of started as a as a hardcore punk band in the early 80s and then they moved quickly in the mid 80s to the uh, you know grindcore which by that time was still uh, not even a you know word uh, I think it's Mick Harris, uh, Mick Harris, who was in the band from the, I think, 85 till 91. Uh, he pretty much invented the whole word grindcore, uh, as far as I know, so that's fucking awesome. And al also, I love Mick Harris's drumming, he's, yeah, but I'll get to that a uh, little bit later in the video. Um, yeah, so they move it to the grindcore, much faster stuff, but still kind of got that punk spirit uh, in the early, you know, in their first album, let's say. Uh, there was definitely some punk element, still hardcore punk. Uh, or crust punk, uh, and then they move it into the more chaotic grindcore uh, in the late eighties. Uh, so uh, the album that came before this, uh, this this came in nineteen nineteen ninety. Uh, the album before this was uh, called From Enslavement to Obliteration, which is also a great album, but uh, it's uh, way different than this. It, that album was just, uh, you know, straight, chaotic, grindcore. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's just... It's crazy album. It's just fucking maniac <laughs> album, and I love it. 
uh, really short songs, really straight to the point, just in your face, uh, grindcore, uh, and it 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 has twenty seven songs, and uh, the album is just one hour, uh, one hour, no, no, uh, half an hour long. Jesus, one hour, no way. <laughs> um, for that kind of hardcore, uh, I mean, grindcore. Uh, so yeah, when this album came and it also, the lineup changed quite a lot. So there was still Mick Harris and Shane Embury, the bassist and drummer. Uh, were the same, but uh, Bill Steer, uh, who's also uh, the guitarist for Carcass, uh, left the band in 89, and also Lee Dorian, the vocalist, uh, also left on the same year. Uh, both left Napalm Death in 89. And Lee Dorian went to form the Cathedral Band, uh, which is also an just legendary uh, doom, doom slash stoner metal band. But yeah, uh, back to this. So uh, this album is definitely influenced by the uh, American early death metal scene uh, from the late 19s to very early, uh, I mean la late 80s, I meant from the late 80s to very early 90s, uh, so very much influenced uh, by the American death metal sound and this was also uh, recorded in Mori Sound Studio in Florida, I think it was in Florida, and was produced by the legendary Scott Burns, who has made millions, uh, I mean, produced millions of albums in America uh, in the, you know, late 80s to yeah, the, the whole 19s and onwards. Uh, yeah, he was the one. Uh, he, he had that, you know, that classic death metal sound. And yeah, uh, so two new members joined in this album and uh, they were both American uh, Americans, uh, because the band was solely British uh, before, uh, in the still in the 80s. But yeah, Mitch Harris and Jesse Pintado, uh, rest his soul, he's gone. Uh, he died, unfortunately, I think in uh, 2006. But yeah, rest in peace, man. Uh, but yeah, Mitch Harris and Jesse Pintado joined Napalm Death uh, for this album. And they really also brought the death metal sound to the Napalm Death, you can clearly see. As, as with Bill Steer, uh, he had more like a grindcore style of uh, just uh, playing style as with uh, Pintado and Harris had uh, had more death metal style playing. Uh, so yeah, uh, and let me go through some of the songs. Uh, I'm not going through every song, but I will go, I will mention my favorite tracks, let's say. And the first one, I think, is... Well, I would say... It's still hard to decide what 
act actually are my favorites because they all are pretty much my favorites but I would say Vision Conquest the first track the opener is just so good so insane riffing and yeah it's a fucking awesome song and uh, then I would say Malicious Intent the fourth track that just has the you know also great riffing and some 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 of the most insane drumming also from Nick Harris on that track and then maybe my fifth song my maybe maybe my favorite song of the album Unfit Earth and that song also includes the guest vocals from obituaries vocalist can't really now remember his name and Glenn Benton from Dayside or Dayside how how do you pronounce it uh, so there's two guest vocalists there and they add some pretty freshing uh, refreshing uh, style to the well already awesome Barney Greenway's uh, death metal vocals and then definitely the seventh song The Chains That Bind Us is probably my second favorite song of the album and then I really like the Mind Snare the next song which is written by Mitch Harris because Mitch Harris only wrote one song and it's Mind Snare Jesse Pintado only uh, wrote one song it's the uh, third song Inner Incineration uh, and a couple of songs were written by Ch Shane and Burry but most of the songs were actually written by the drummer Mick Harris so uh, so I would say that's quite Uh, quite rare that the drummer is the main songwriter uh, and it just you know tells how how skilled uh, how talented the Mick Harris is uh, he's not just a fucking great drummer but he's also a very talented songwriter I mean I would say yeah he's songs are the best ones pretty much on the album and yeah uh, but suffer the children which is definitely the most you know well-known most famous song of well napalm death overall and the most known well-known song from this album it's good but maybe i'm a little bit tired of that song already because I have heard it so many times <laughs> so many hundreds or thousands of times so and so I wouldn't say that track is I would even go as far as saying that's one of the less lesser songs in this album it, it's well every song is good but it's one of the songs that are not as good as the rest of the songs it it's not it's not the worst song uh, and by saying worst it really is saying wrong cuz i like i said every song is freaking awesome on this album pretty much but yeah uh and yeah uh talking about you know the instruments yeah mick harris drumming is just insane he's really you know the aggression and his style is just so you know hardcore it's just so raw and aggressive and 
yeah, I, I love his drumming and also the dual guitar, uh, guitar force uh, by Mitch Harris and uh, Jesse Pintado. They are great. This this album is like full of just awesome riffs, uh, mem very memorable riffs that will forever play on my head <laughs> uh, till the day I die, <laughs> pretty much. And the Shane Embury's bass is uh, very, very uh, loud and it's distorted. Uh, uh, I think Napalm Death has always used a distorted bass and it's just the way they uh, play and it's perfect for them. And also it's, it's pretty perfect for, you know, death metal and especially grindcore. And yeah, uh, then Barney Greenway's vocals, well, Although I don't really like his vocals nowadays, uh, he he just sounds weird. I I can't really explain, but I don't really like his vocals right now. But his vocals were spot on, like almost perfect death metal gro growling uh, on this album. And also after that, the couple of. Uh, albums after this, his vocals were still great, but then I would say in the beginning of late 90s, uh, his vocals started to sound, uh, you know, quite boring to me. But yeah, his vocals on this album are just uh, phenomenal. Uh, I can't really praise that enough. And yeah, um, what else to say about the album? Well, I think I pretty much said it all. Uh, yeah, this, this was their death metal uh, era, the beginning of death metal era and their next album, Utopia Banished, which is actually this, uh, you know, this uh, shirt uh, is the Utopia Banished uh, shirt. Uh, that still has the death metal elements, but it goes back to the grindcore. Uh, like, I would say half, half. It's a 50% death metal and 15% grindcore, I would say. Uh, but yeah, that I would say that they still continue that death metal style on that album. And also the next Fear, Emptiness, Despair uh, also continued uh, the death metal sound, but more varied and more... Uh, you know, slow paced also. It, uh, in Fear, Emptiness, Despair, it was not just about speed like it was in the Utopia Banished and pretty much in this album also. So yeah, there was also those more slow paced, more heavy songs. But yeah, not, not going to uh, talk about those albums any, uh, anymore. Uh, because this is pretty much about harmony corruption and uh, and yeah, uh, this copy also has uh, it doesn't say on the back cover it it also says you know those eleven songs and yeah one uh, extra song bonus track hiding behind uh, but this also includes the mentally murdered. EP recorded in uh, 89. Uh, the EP that was actually the last recordings of Bill Steer and Lee Dorian on Napalm Death. Uh, and that six song EP is also pretty fucking amazing. Uh, it kind of started to sound 
on that EP, that, that I would say that EP started the death metal sound of Napalm Death. It it had a much more death metal uh, sound than from enslavement to obliteration, which didn't have pretty much any of. May, maybe maybe just a little bit, but uh, yeah, the EP really started to you know the death metal era, and this just continued that to the, you know, to the extreme, <laughs> and to more, even more death metal sound. But yeah, uh, okay, I will show you that uh, CD also, like I showed that uh, Fear Factory. Uh, well, this is pretty plain and pretty boring, actually, this CD cover, but yeah. And quite, I, I don't really know, uh, it, it's just weird that it's white. I mean, it doesn't really go well with the rest of this, you know, album's uh, art. But, well, whatever. Yeah, and of course the rating I will give this album, yeah, 10 minus. <laughs> it's almost perfect. Not perfect 10, but 10 minus. And yeah, see you in the next video. It's about games or it can be another album review. We'll see. But yeah, bye for now.